This is the Arctic Ocean. Somewhere under this sea of ice is an American submarine, the nuclear-powered Nautilus. Compasses play tricks up here. A gyro compass can drift. Where in this nowhere is Nautilus? These men know where they are, exactly. Time, 2315, 3 August, 1958. Place, 400 feet below the North Pole. Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, 22 June, 1988. USS Nautilus is arriving from, well, the word being passed is that the cruise was south near the equator. This is not quite true. To observe the security of the actual mission, the equator story has been rehearsed by all hands. Nautilus really is arriving from the north, the far north. Nautilus left Seattle 19 days ago. Announced destination, the equator. Actual destination, the Arctic. Code name, Operation Sunshine. Not warm sunshine, but 24-hour sunshine. Probing the depths of the Chukchi Sea beyond the Arctic Circle, Nautilus was confronted by ice. So thick and deep, there was danger of becoming trapped between the underside of the ice and the shallow sea bottom. The commanding officer decided to retrace his course and wait at Pearl Harbor for better ice conditions. Nautilus waits. Her equipment is checked and tested. Her officers study the problem. It is decided the navigator should fly up and have a look at the top side of the ice. Leaving his twin dolphin insignia behind, he poses as a dew-line inspector. A submariner flying with an anti-submarine patrol. Someday, they will know about his true mission. The heavy ice is now moving farther north. The door is open. Back to Pearl Harbor, on the double. 2000, local time, 22 July, 1958. Place, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. USS Nautilus, proceed with mission. Operation Sunshine 2. Destination, classified. To avoid detection, Nautilus will run submerged. This is the realm of Nautilus, her element. Her top speed, classified, but more than 20 knots. Her operating depth, 400 feet. Powered by atomic energy, Nautilus is capable of cruising 20,000 leagues under the sea on one charge of fuel. The submerged course, north, straight up through the Aleutians. Bring St. Lawrence off the starboard and Siberia to the port. Proceed, north. Up scope, take 30 seconds, check position, proceed. Now through the Bering Strait, across the Arctic Circle, and into the Chukchi Sea. Never forget Nautilus is a fighting ship. Training in all operations keeps her trim. She's also a home. Best food in the Navy.
From here to the North Pole is a nearly solid cover of ice, the polar pack. 1,800 miles from here to the closest edge in the Greenland Sea. Chief Rail aids Lieutenant Jenks in plotting the course. From here on, some known facts, some unknowns. The ice, not too thick. The sea bottom, some of it charted, some not. From here on, skill counts, and courage, and faith. Faith in the officer, faith in the other members of the crew, in Nautilus and her gear, the nuclear power plant, faith in the navigation systems, the old and tried, the new and true, and faith in the almighty. Ahead, history. Take her down. Nautilus has been under the ice for more than 60 hours. Civilian scientists Archie Walker and Waldo Lyon operate the topside fathometer. How thick is the ice overhead? Check. Sonar. How far to the ocean bottom? Check. What's ahead? Check. The drinking water, is it pure? Check. And the air? Is it within safe limits? Test it. Navigating 1,200 miles under the polar ice, Nautilus has a seventh sense at work, inertial navigation. Civilian guidance engineer Tom Curtis translates the readings. With no outside references, the inertial navigator reads, remembers, and interprets accelerations in all directions, giving exact position readings constantly. In a few moments, Nautilus will realize a goal, long a dream of mankind, the attainment by ship of the North Geographic Pole. Captain, Commander William R. Anderson, drops in on the crew's celebration. A letter to the Commander-in-Chief. One of the crew ships over for another six-year hitch. Naturally, the principal resident of the North Pole pays a visit to Nautilus. Congratulations to the men who passed all exams and are now qualified in nuclear submarines. The North Pole, where brave explorers searched and discovered, suffered and died. Names flood the memory. Ross, Peary, Stephenson, Amundsen, Wilkins, Bird, to these names add Commander William Anderson and the crew of Nautilus. 116 Americans crossing the North Pole with no frostbite, no hunger, no illness, but with skill, courage, and the Navy spirit. Now, south. The serious business of running out to open water is still at hand.
5 August, in the Greenland Sea between Northeast Greenland and Spitsbergen, 1,830 miles of polar ice behind her, Nautilus rides in the sunshine. Her silent radio now cracks out the coded message to the Chief of Naval Operations, Nautilus 90 North. Off Iceland, Commander Anderson is airlifted to Washington. Nautilus proceeds to her destination, England. Dateline, Washington. President Eisenhower today awarded the Legion of Merit to Commander William R. Anderson of the United States nuclear-powered submarine Nautilus, which pioneered a submerged sea lane between the eastern and western hemispheres. Also, the Presidential Unit Citation was awarded for the first time in peace to Nautilus and all hands. New York City, Nautilus is home. After setting a new submerged speed record from Portland, England to New York City, Nautilus is tying up at Brooklyn Navy Yard. Commander Anderson now comes ashore, followed by Admiral Rickover, called the father of the atomic submarine. Secretary of the Navy Gates, and New York City officials who boarded in the harbor. Welcome home. Well done. Broadway, and a hero's welcome for the officers and men of Nautilus, an enthusiastic tribute from a grateful nation. science, nuclear power, inertial navigation, and the courage and spirit of the Navy are making new history even now in the trackless voids beneath the seas.